Hello everyone, I'm Glasses Geek and congratulations you found me. <laughs> I've been having a hard time uh, finding people on YouTube lately and so yeah. And also I'm finally starting to remember how to actually do my makeup. So you know and I'm sorry if I keep on looking over here to my right because that that's where my computer screen is. So Anyway, yeah, so this is this is what I look like when I'm doing my makeup a little bit better. Hopefully it will get better as the days and the times go on uh, because I, you know, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Of course, I'm finding out that doing makeup for these cameras is a lot like doing makeup for theater, so... Okay, so today uh, I'm going to deal with Wicca, a history. And if you know anything about me, uh, you know that I've had an extremely interesting life, especially spiritually. And this has now led me to study something called Wicca. So I've decided to take this year and study all things Wiccan and learn all about this newfangled religion. And so come along and I hope you enjoy this as much and maybe even more than I will. So yay! <laughs> Hello again. Um, so yeah, I, I moved the camera angle because I'm going to have to be actually reading on, on the script here on what I have on my, uh, my computer screen. So I'm, I had to re-angle. <laughs> I had to re-angle the camera. So I, I hope that this will be all right. And I hope that I won't blow out the microphone, too. So. Okay, so here we go. So to start off, I decided to dive into the history of Wicca. What created it, how it came to be, what information can I gleam, especially since it was supposed to be so hidden and silent, only known by the few and the far between. Personally, I say, give people light and let them find their own way. And that's what I will attempt to do here. I do want to warn, though, that this is by no means an exhaustive or even a full and detailed history on Wicca and how it came to be and how it came into existence, though it may seem this way. And since I'm new to all of this, I'm far from an authority in this seemingly cutting edge and eclectic religion. Uh, so because of this, take everything I say here with a grain of salt and view each video as basically a jumping off point, a springboard, if you will, for you to do your own research and to find out for yourself about this religion and see if it's right for you and see if it's even something that you want to even get into or look into really, really thoroughly and deeply. So... So let's get into it. So now, from what I could find on Wikipedia, it said that Wicca was founded in England between 1921 and 1950 and represents what the historian Ronald Hutton called, quote, the only full, the only full-formed religion which England can be said to have given the world, unquote. This religion is seen as a, quote, invented tradition, unquote, by scholars, uh, anyone in the college circles. Wicca was created from a patchwork of various older elements, and many of these elements taken from pre-existing religions and esoteric movements. So initially, uh, that's a pretty good summing up, I think. I, I got this off of Wikipedia, and that's what it said. For me, that's a little bit confusing, I, I have to admit. Um, and from my other more deeper researching, I've found that like the field of psychology, it is debated exactly where and how Wicca actually began. As for who started Wicca, there, though there are many well-known names and faces, the most widely accepted, at least for laymen like myself, for starting the religion is Gerald 
Brousseau Gardner. He is generally seen as the father of Wicca, though he never called it that. This is kind of like the field of psychology where Sigmund Freud is not the accepted creator of it. In other words, psychologists themselves don't necessarily recognize Freud as the father of psychology, since there are so many other people they know of and rightfully point to as creating the whole field. Yet for Lehman, he is the most widely recognized and seen as the father of it. The same seems to be true here. In both fields, there are many others who helped start it, but overall, these two people, Freud for psychology and Gerald Gardner for Wicca, are the most publicly recognized and accepted. So I just looked up how to pronounce Gerald Brousseau Gardner, <laughs> or at least that's, that's how to pronounce his name. Apparently it's French. It's very French. Um, and I can't pronounce it properly, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to be mutilating his name in a very, very English-speaking way. So my apologies in advance. <laughs> so, but I'll, I'll give it a shot here. So who is Gerald Brousseau Gadner? <laughs> The generally accepted quote, father of Wicca, unquote. So who is this Gerald Gardner, the generally accepted father of Wicca, quote unquote? Well, he was born June 13th, 1884, north of Liverpool in England. He was a civil servant, meaning he worked for the British government, and he was stationed through uh, most of his career in Asia. An amateur anthropologist and archaeologist, he was a world traveler who was interested in and studied all things in the occult, magical practices, and esoteric literature, doing most of his research while he was stationed in Asia. After World War II started, he returned to England, and since the country had finally repealed their anti-witchcraft laws, he immediately started a coven and did many other things, even being involved in publishings called High Magic's Aid, which went... Uh, came out in 1949, Witchcraft Today, which came out in 1954, and The Meaning of Witchcraft, which came out in 1959. Between 1936 and 1939, Gardner befriended the Christian mystic J.S.M. Ward. In 1946, he was elected to the Council of the Folklore Society, where he gave a talk on, quote, art, magic, and talismans, unquote. That same year, he also joined the Society for Psychical Research, and he also, in August, was ordained as a priest in the ancient British church, which was an esoteric version of Christianity. He was also an especially big fan and reader, if not follower, of Aleister Crowley. Uh, Aleister Crowley was a ceremonial magician who founded the religion of Thelma in 1904 and who identified himself as, quote, the prophet entrusted with guiding humanity into the Aeon of Horus, unquote, in the early 20th century. Gardner would eventually get to meet him on May Day, 1947, via being introduced through his friend Arnold Crowther. I probably mutilated that name too. I'm sorry. So... <laughs> Gardner even took an interest in druidity, or druid, druidy, <laughs> druidi, <laughs> druidi, I think, I don't know, I'm sorry, and joined the Ancient Druid Order, or A-D-O, Ancient Druid Order too, attending, attending its annual midsummer rituals at Stonehenge. Now this next bit, for me, is extremely upsetting, but as it turns out, Gerald Brousseau Gardner was also a supporter of the right-wing conservative party, and for several years had been a member of the High Cliff Conservative Association, as well as being an avid reader of the pro-conservative no newspaper, The Daily Telegraph. This might be why it seemed that so many people were initially so Republican when it came to this belief system, which I noticed back in the day, especially in the earlier years, even up into the 1980s and early 1990s. I noticed that now looking back, I mean, there was something up with all these people that I met 
and turns out they were all they were all witches i don't know if they were wiccans but they were definitely all witches and they were i want to say i've never run into such republican people before but yeah so that's why that's why i wrote i put that in there so anyway oh yeah well, that's it for this video. I'll give what else I have managed to cobble together like a true Wiccan MacGyver. <laughs> I guess you have to be old enough to know what MacGyver is. <clears throat> so, <laughs> by the way, did you know that the witchy term for Angus, it means the Celtic god of wisdom and the name can mean, quote, special, unquote, or, quote, unique, unquote. By the way, the character MacGyver, his name, they finally gave it at the very end of the entire show, the entire thing, and his name was Angus. Like the steak. Now I know why they gave him the name of a steak. Because the first thing I thought when they said that, when they finally gave him a name on the last episode, it was like, you mean like a steak? Like a cow? Like beef? Oh, weird. But now I know that... You know, they named him that because, and why they named the steak Angus, because it meant special and unique. And it's actually the Celtic god of wisdom. And with the name MacGyver, probably Scottish. So there you go. <laughs> and that's very much what that character was. Uh, Angus MacGyver is very much wise, special, and pretty cool, I'd say. So, but that's a... That's a big geeky point for me. So if you can ever watch MacGyver, the original MacGyver, the original MacGyver back in the 1980s, watch that 80s, 90s, whatever, whenever it was on. As far as I know, it was, it was on in the 1980s. I think it might have even started 1985, maybe. But yeah, go watch that. That is amazing. So yeah, um, so that's it for this episode of all things Wicca and whatnot. So Anyway, I'll go over more of the history that I was able to unearth in the next video, though I will say it's not much. So, you know, if you like this and if you want to keep watching or see more, then please like and subscribe. Click the thumbs up button. Click the notification bell. And uh, thanks for stopping by the flip side of the... And thanks for stopping by the flip side of life. And I'll be back next week to geek out again. And I hope you have a great geeky week. And maybe even a witchy geeky week. So, <laughs> bye.